Do you want to learn how to make this meal in a jar, it's taco soup in a jar, from this can of beans? Stay tuned and I'll show you how. Hey folks, it's Darcy from thepurposefulpantry.com and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be learning how to dehydrate canned beans. This is a fast, easy, and pretty inexpensive way to stock your pantry quickly with uh, dehydrated beans that are good for backpacking and hiking meals, that are good for meals in a jar, just like this taco soup recipe right here that I'll show you how to make. What I've done is I've rinsed uh, the beans uh, I've opened the jars, put the, the beans into a, a colander, and rinsed them. So what I have here is one can of beans. And what I'm going to do is dehydrate these separately from the bulk. Because that way, you can have an accurate measurement of what one can of beans is like once it's dried. Uh, and then you can make a notation of that. And so you know how to then uh, do your bulk, how much to pull out in order to use in a, it to convert in a recipe. So here's one tray of beans. I'm going to put these directly on my sheet. I'm not going to use any kind of um, liner. I don't need it. I'm just going to spread these out because you do want these to be completely spread out so that there's they're not stacked on top of each other and uh, they have plenty of room to have moisture taken from all sides. You want the airflow to happen all around the bean. Okay, so it looks like one tray is gonna be about one can on my machine. This is a cassori. Uh, if you're using a larger one, uh, you might be able to get more, um, but I think that we're gonna be safe just doing about one can per tray. So something to warn you about when you're drying beans, you'll already see it in some of these. Um, I can't picture, pull one out specifically to show you, but even when you cook beans, some of your beans will start splitting. The skin on the top will split. Sometimes the bean will actually start splitting. Like you can see right here, this is just skin of a bean that at some point has lost the bean. So that can happen. But when you're dehydrating, just like if you're doing blueberries or grapes that you've frozen and then dehydrate, the skin will break because the freezing method of that breaks down the the uh, cells of the, the fruit, and then once you start dehydrating it, it shrinks and that skin breaks and it allows the moisture to go. That's, so the same thing is gonna happen with the beans. The skin on the beans has already been broken through the cooking process, so when they dry, they're gonna shrink and you're gonna see these break. Now, not all of them will break, some of them will break, maybe all of yours will, uh, maybe most of them won't. It, it just depends on the bean and how you cooked it and all that kind of stuff. So be prepared for these to break. They're not gonna be pretty little beans when you're finished with them. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these trays started. Then we're gonna go ahead and get dry. There's a bean that split. I don't know if you can see it in the camera if it's gonna, but that's a bean that has split just during the cooking process. So you're gonna to wanna to be gentle with these when you're putting them on the trays. Yes, they're gonna split when they're drying anyway, but you don't wanna mash them now. You just wanna to try to leave them as whole as possible. So just be gentle. Okay, if you are somebody who likes to do by weight instead of by volume, if you're a hiker, a camper, a backpacker, or if you like to have meals already set up uh, by weight, um, if that's important to you, then this is how you would do it for the beans, okay? Um, we're going to put a container onto our... our um, we're going to put a container onto our scale, and then we're going to... Tear is the word they use this is zero out, but you're going to go ahead and zero out the container so that you're doing just the, the beans. You're going to have already opened your can. You're going to drain them, uh, rinse them, and then drain them so that you don't have the additional liquid. This is going to have a little bit, but it's not, it's not a deal breaker, okay? So we're going to pour these into the bowl, and we're going to measure the weight of what's in the bowl. So right now we're at about 8.1 ounces. I'm going to take one ounce of that away from the leftover moisture that's still on here that didn't drain fully. So it's about eight ounces. While your can says 15 ounces, um, you know that that is also all of the liquid that's on the inside too, which we're not going to dehydrate the liquid. We rinse that away. So we have about eight ounces of this. So just go ahead and pour that out onto your tray. We're going to dry this. And that way, when you're done, you're just going to go back and measure the dried version so that you know the difference between wet and dry uh, is the, uh, the amount of moisture that you need to put back into the beans when you're rehydrating them. But I always add just a little bit extra because things don't always rehydrate perfectly. So you may need a little extra moisture uh, to get things to rehydrate fully, or you might have a little too much. So you need to know that the adjustment is necessary and just to be aware of that and not think that it's going to be exact every time. All right, so let's get all of these on the trays. Okay, so here are all six trays of my Kasori ready to go. The top and the bottom are the single cans. The middle is just what I just put on, you know, put on the beans. It didn't matter. So we're going to set it. Uh, we're going to dry at 125 
for about six to eight hours, depending on your, your, your machine, your home's humidity, the humidity in the air around you, how much of the moisture is still in your beans. Um, there are so many things that can affect the time. You're gonna dry them till they're dry. Okay, we're gonna set that at 125. My time is set for 35 hours just because I just let it run until I'm, you know, I check them and I know they're done. I don't care about the time. Here we go, we'll get started. Okay, here we are after about five hours. Mine are already dry. Now, remember I said six to eight hours. It will always depend on your bean, on your uh, machine, your relative humidity in your home. But here they are. So let's get these unpacked and I'm going to show you how to store them and then how we can use them. Now that we're done with these, I'm going to test the, uh, the one tray that I weighed so that we would know exactly how much water you would need to rehydrate your beans, give or take a little extra. So this was eight ounces of uh, canned wet beans. So this came out to two and a half ounces. Uh, grams, can I figure out grams? I should have done that one before. So if it was eight, so that means it needs five and a half ounces of water to rehydrate this to back to the original eight ounces of beans. And because I am not on a strict trail uh, project, I'm not gonna worry about trying to get exactly the right amount of water because pretty much anything that these will go into, uh, I'm gonna need some extra water anyway. So what I'm gonna do, so what I'm doing is I fill it up to about twice the volume of the beans that I had in the jar, and then I'm gonna set this in the refrigerator overnight. If I have too much water, that extra water can be used for however these are gonna be used. I'm gonna heat them up in either in tacos or in the soup or stew. So that little bit of extra water is just gonna be incorporated into whatever I make, okay? So we're just gonna set these aside for that. And for those of you who work volumetrically, this is what we're doing. I'm gonna just show you how many how much this takes. This makes about one cup. Okay, so what do we do next? It's conditioning time. You take your jar, you put your beans in it, and every day you're gonna shake the beans once, just messing them around with them. What you're looking for is if you do this and bean clumps start sticking together or a clump of beans is sticking on the side. Even if it sticks a little bit with beans, you need to put it back into the machine and let it dry some more. Okay, so we're ready. We're gonna make something kind of special. Well, you've already seen it before actually. It's taco soup in a jar where you can keep pretty much all of your taco soup within this jar and you can have it on the shelf and it's gonna be shelf stable for as long as you need it. Now what I'm not doing is putting any kind of broth in here or any bouillon. What I'm gonna do is do everything but that. And when I would go to cook this, I would either use a bouillon cube with it or I would just use stock um, or you know broth, however you make yours. Uh, you can use water if you put the bouillon powder in here. I choose not to, I just wait and do it at the end with, with canned broth that I have. Um, but you can do it whichever way you want. This is gonna be the one without broth or a bouillon cube, okay? So we're gonna start layering this. Okay, here's what we're gonna do next. We are gonna make a taco soup. It's gonna be a layered taco soup meal in a jar. If you wanna see what this tastes like or what it looks like when it's cooked, you can check out this video here uh, that I did a couple of weeks ago with it. Uh, but this makes a great uh, way to keep a meal in a jar on your shelf. You can actually put this in a Mylar bag if you wish as well, that's fine too. Uh, all this is gonna mix together. Then you're gonna put it into a pot to uh, add water to and let it simmer, uh, season it more however you'd like. Um, and then that's, you have taco soup at the ready. And this is also gonna make a really great Christmas gift for somebody or a holiday gift for anybody who you might know that might be interested in a quick meal or who might need some stocking up for themselves. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is a cup of beans. And we are gonna measure this just because it's gotta fit in the jar. Now you can use almost any bean that you want. We are going to need a cup of dried rice. And if you need to know how to dry rice, I'll leave you a uh, link to the uh, video down below. Okay, a cup of rice. We're going to need a half a cup of onion flakes. You're gonna need about three quarters of a cup of uh, dried corn.
I do about half a cup of dried peppers because I'm not a massive fan of them. So we don't add a ton. We're gonna add those right there. All right, now as far as tomato paste, taco seasoning, green powder. The green powder and vegetable powder are both a matter of uh, personal choice if you have the room, if you have something going on. Uh, so the tomato powder is just to make it a little extra tomatoey. We're going to use about a half a cup of tomato powder. I'm going to put all these in together. About two tablespoons of taco seasoning. You can add more or less to your taste. Come on. I usually do a couple of tablespoons of vegetable powder. I'm going to green powder. little vegetable powder just to add some more vegetables in there. And then a couple tablespoons of oregano to your taste. Stick those in there like that. All right, so here we go. Now, my jar's a little full. These may not all fit, but we'll get pretty close. There we go. Just perfect. And then what we would do is that if you want to put this away for a long time, you can put a moisture absorber on the top of your jar uh, and then just seal, pile it up. Seal it up tight like that. Make sure to label your jar. And there you have taco soup from the dried ingredients that we've done. Now, if you want to add meat to this, I do happen to have freeze-dried meat, okay? I don't do my own uh, for storage at all. This is freeze-dried hamburger that, um, that you can add to this, but here's the drawback. The best recommendation for storing proteins like this after they've been dried and even freeze dried is in the freezer after they've been opened because you want to make them last as long as you can. It shortens their shelf life considerably. You may have had really great luck keeping hamburger meat on the shelf, but if you want to go by the safest, best recommendation is to keep this in the freezer. I do not. Um, I do keep this for about six months after I've opened it. We use it. Uh, and then if I feel like I'm not going to get through it, then I do put it in a smaller container and put it in the freezer. But I go through this pretty quickly. What I don't do is put the beef into a jar like this for long-term storage. I will keep it separate. And when I'm ready to make this soup, if I want to add some extra meat to it, then I go to my freeze dried and I add it at the point that I'm drying. I meant that I'm cooking the taco soup. Before we go, you want to make instant refried beans out of these? When you pull your beans out of the, the can, what you can do is mash them with some, uh, do a loose mash of them with your uh, refried bean uh, seasonings of choice. You can do it that way and then you can dry those and you can have bark where if you just like puree it down to bark, you can break pieces of the bark off and then just rehydrate that. Or you can kind of have it chunky and use it that way. Or you can take these beans, powder them, have the powder and then mix it with your spices and water to get the, the thickness of the desired consistency that you want. So I'm going to leave the video to doing uh, the taco soup when it's cooked right here. If you want the recipe, get the link. It's in the link down below um, and links to all, how to do all these other products are in there as well. So I hoped learning how to do beans was helpful for you um, and I will see you again next time. Happy dehydrating.